I was in LA at the time in 95 and I was shooting uh, a movie uh, out there and it was some kind of scientific thing you know and uh, I played this uh, professor that had discovered a drug that could make you live forever and like all good shows it all goes wrong and it, my body starts to deteriorate really quickly so one day I go into work and they put on this bald cap and from the back of my head underneath this ball cap I could see this huge lump that I hadn't noticed before. Um, it looks something similar to Ayers Rock. You know. and so I came home and uh, I, I was sent straight for an MRI and they discovered two brain tumours. They discovered uh, one un directly underneath the, the lump that I'd seen underneath the bone where it was protecting itself and then the second one that was right in the centre of the brain. Now the one on the outside you can get to so you can physically cut it out, uh, which, even though it was much bigger, it didn't, for some reason, it didn't worry me because I knew they could get to it. But the second one that was sitting right in the center of my brain, um, that was always the worry. And it was the one that was kind of attacked secondly. And uh, I mean, the worry is, obviously, if you operate to get to that, then uh, there's going to be a load of uh, excess damage around the good tissue as well while you go through the middle of the brain to get to it. Um, so I didn't fancy that. So, but we were going to do it that way. We were going to operate. And it was my wife who, who stood up and said, no, there's got to be another way. So we hunted round. We actually, uh, she ended up calling uh, a doctor in America, a Professor Black uh, in America. And he said, uh, well, actually, it's on your doorstep. There's a machine that does stereotactic radiation that's usually used for cancer patients. And, uh, but we're having some success with benign tumours. So he said, and it's right, it's up the road from where you live. I was in Highgate at the time, and uh, he said it's in Bart. So it's, uh, check it out. So we came down here, we, we saw what was available, and uh, I ended up having the treatment. It was 20 minutes, and uh, 20 minutes treatment and years and years of worry but um, in the end it disappeared uh, and th that machine that I had it done on is the predecessor to this gamma knife. Gamma knife is not a, a new treatment it's been around since 1968 in very early experimental form and the first machine in the UK was in 1985. The advantages of treatment with gamma knife are that it's, it's not an operation, there are no incisions, there's nothing to recover from particularly after the treatment. People are treated usually as day case in and out the same day, uh, whereas if I were to operate on some of the skull based tumours that are treated on this, they'll perhaps be in hospital for seven to ten days and maybe away from work for two to three months. Uh, so huge advantages to the patient. It has the advantage of delivering in a very precise way radiotherapy with millimeter accuracy to the tumours that we treat. And those tumours can be varied from benign base of skull tumours to non-tumorous conditions such as vascular malformations, tangles of arteries and veins, where it's now become the accepted first-line treatment for most, most uh, clinicians. I've spent a lot of time over the last few years going around to different hospitals around the country, putting myself up as a kind of example really, that you can come through it, that everything isn't the end of the world when you're told you have benign tumours. Uh, even cancer tumours that can be uh, attacked with machines like this. And, uh, but when you're in the middle of that situation, when you've just been told you've got it, it's hard to see any light at the end of any tunnel. Uh, you're, you're just in a, in a really bad space in your life. Um, so I kind of put myself up as an example really, just to say uh, you can come through it. The private public partnership I think is very important. It's, it's allowed this machine to be installed here and, and to be used here, which, it, which wouldn't have happened otherwise I think with public money alone. There's a significant contribution from HCA International to buy the equipment and Barts and the London have paid for the building works to put it in. And the patients are coming through the NHS almost exclusively, about 85% well, I guess of our work is NHS. So <coughs> by the private sector putting the money in we're able to treat the NHS patients in a very um, rapid way uh, with state-of-the-art technology. It was nice to move on for me um, after the brain tumour um, you know because uh, it's a kind of funny thing that goes with it, it because it, for me 
being kind of well known, uh, yeah, my picture in the paper always had a little tagline underneath that said Martin Kemp brain tumour. And so it was nice for me to move on after that because then it became Martin Kemp EastEnders or Martin Kemp Spandau Ballet or, or The Craze or whatever you wanted to go. But for a long time it said Martin Kemp brain tumour.